All right, so I've done quite a lot of trial and error where we um, left off. I took a bit of a break and uh, recorded a few things and, and found some things I, I want to suggest. So where we left off before um, was we, so if I go back into my history here, I have done some other things, but we exported that training data for deep learning. So we've created our data set and we exported that uh, to a specific um uh, location. So if I look at that, what that has actually created, so I'll go to my desktop, go to my input data, and this is the third one I've made. There's accumulated stats, model definition. This is the most important part. Now this is a uh, type of um, structured file that stores all of the data um, and, and uh, specifically the model uh, that we're working with. So if I edit this with Notepad, I can see uh, it's a TensorFlow or PyTorch. It's either use UNED. I can put in these designations, um, and so I can I can actually edit this. and And if you wanted to, you could edit this too, right? So if I know I really want um, UNED or I really want a specific model uh, um, approach, or I know that I want image classification, um, I know where the the model is. Um, I can I can add all these things. So, so this is kind of a nice thing to to know about. However, we actually don't have to change anything here. Um, so the most important part, and I've modified some of our uh, the documentation that I'm going to share with you. Um, but you must have ArcGIS Pro version 2.5 or higher, and you must have the image analyst extension. So I was on 2.3, I then upgraded to 2.4, I then patched to 2.5 four point something. Um, and then I eventually actually had to install ArcGIS Pro 2.5, the newest version, in order for this uh, deep learning tool to come up. Because the only way to train the deep learning model within ArcMap is to use the train deep learning model um, tool. So it's a Python based tool uh, to, to do so. So that is literally the only way uh, it right now to do it within ArcMap. Now you could, if you wanted, do it outside of ArcMap. So if you go to train deep learning model, not only can you do it within ArcMap, but as long as you have the output of a model, right? And so in PyTorch, that's a PD file, um, you could actually uh, bring that into ArcMap and work with it. Um, but if you want to use the use it through um, the command line through ArcPy, you can do that like this. So I suggest you read this documentation as well, which I can provide in the description for this video once I add it here to some resources. For you. So what have we done here? We have exported our features, we've um, classified certain areas, and now what we can do is we can um, input the training data. So I wanna go to my training data. I've exported that. Um, remember the key thing about exporting this data is I want to use the export training data for deep learning. Um, so I just exported that. And now in here, I want to go to where I've exported that. I then want to choose a location for, oh, yep, that's where I exported that. Then I want to choose a location for the output, so I'm going to actually call this, create a new folder, or actually go to my desktop, create a new folder. I'm going to call that output data, just to separate my inputs and my outputs from my model. I'll click OK, and now I see this weird error. And the reason why there's an error here is because by default in this model, if I look at this, I'm not passing in a model structure. So let me actually open that. If I go into this model, so if I go into input data here, and I take a look inside here, and I look inside this model definition, again, edit with Notepad. And I look in here, you can see I'm not passing in a model type. I'm leaving the default. And if I do that, it's not going to know what model I want. Now, if you search here, 
we have a lot of variety of models that we can choose, and it really depends on your um, your area of interest, right? Um, for me, what I want to do today is pixel classification. So I want all the pixels in my input data uh, to actually be classified, right? I, I have this box, this raster, and I would like it to classify as one of these classes of data that I have. So I am going to use the UNet model. The other thing to think about here is batch size. So um, the default is two. If you have a more powerful GPU, you can increase it. I'm going to increase it to eight. Um, I can also pass in some model arguments here, uh, grids, zooms, things like that. Um, if you want, you could read through this documentation. You can also select a learning rate. If you have some idea of how your model will perform, you can also choose a different backbone model. Uh, you can use ResNet 34, ResNet 50, uh, but I'm going to keep everything the same. Uh, oh, it does note that output data already exists. That's okay. I can I can overwrite that. There's nothing in there. I might want to change my match, max epochs. Uh, one thing that we probably should do at some point is cross-validate on these, um, but right now we, we could write a uh, a model builder script to do that, but, but it's okay if we don't. And we can click Run now. So now we're actually training this deep learning model on the data set that we've brought in. And so this might take some time, but we were able to train this deep learning model and um, soon, hopefully in a couple minutes, we will have some results of our deep learning model. One thing to note just while we're waiting, oh, it's completed, excellent. Oh, let's see why it failed. Oh, it looks like we didn't choose the, uh, looks like we didn't choose the correct Well, no harm in that. We can take a quick look, see if anyone else has had this problem. So if you, if you don't know already, you should always uh, try to um, find if anyone else has had the same problem. All right, looks like someone has had the same problem, which is, uh, sometimes it wants you to log into these. So if you, uh, if you want to get around that, you can just copy that. You could also log in, but in this case, I, I don't really want to, um, just because I'm showing you, I normally am locked in. The details to the path name you use. The shape file. Did you add the SHP in event more information in the file path? Oh, okay. So it seems like actually the output folder name. So that warning that we got before is our issue. Um, maybe it just wants a different file name that hasn't been created yet. Um, that would suggest to me that there's probably some sort of uh, issue. Let's see if that solves it. Hmm. Yeah, maybe it, it defaults to creating the directory. That would be something useful to know. Well, still failed. Uh, perhaps it could be something, it is telling me something about dataset type K-I-T-T-I -T -T rectangles. Let's take a look at this. Um, ah, metadata mode is... K-I-T-T-I -T rectangles. That's interesting. I believe, um, potentially, let's take a look at what this actually is. Potentially, that might not be compatible with the, um, with the, uh, 
with a unit based system. I'm just going to take a look at this error one more time. Well, I'll pause this and figure this out and then unpause. All right, and we're back. So um, it ended up that we actually had to change the type of um, training data that we used for machine learning. Um, so if I have my regular input raster, just the same as before, um, and I choose a output folder, I'm gonna go to my desktop. Again, here I'll call it trained model six, just to keep consistent. Oh, and it won't exist, I'll create a folder trained model six. And so by default, if I bring in my Puerto Rico example in my value field, and um, if I, when I looked up the error that we were having before, uh, it was suggested on GeoNet, right? I forget exactly where, maybe. One of the issues we ran into, and what I was looking at before, I found something on GeoNet that suggested that you use a PNG format. That then led me to read the documentation for specifically classified tiles. And it says if you're working with a multi-class data set, as we are, you have to use classified tiles as the metadata format. Although they actually contain some of the least information um, about the training data, that is what we have to use. Um, so if you run this, it will export those, those files. Um, and then you should be able to go back here to your train deep learning model. Now, a couple things to note about this. You will need to go in and um, select your same training data, um, select a new folder that doesn't exist, right? An actual something called like output three, output you know, whatever output you, you want to choose. The default max epoch is 20. Um, I think this seems appropriate to start out. Um, you do have to choose a model type. So if you get an error up here on input training data, you should choose your model type. And this should be consistent with what you're trying to do. If you're trying to classify objects, detect objects, classify pixels, classify pixels, right? In our case, we're classifying. So we might want to use UNET. Batch size, as you can see here, um, the number of training samples, the default value is two. We could increase this if we have a strong GPU. In my case, I'm using CPU. So I'm, and I'll just input the training data here. Like so, I wanna make sure that my output data will call this slash output four. We want to make sure that's unique, and it is. It'll give you an error or a warning there if it's not unique. Um, we'll do a batch size of, well, I think two is okay. And the reason why two is okay for me is because I am going to use only a CPU. So in this case, I haven't set up this for GPU acceleration, although this does have an NVIDIA GPU. I could use it for GPU acceleration, but I just want to use 100%, so all of the CPUs on this computer uh, to process. Uh, the GPU ID is zero because I'm not using a GPU. And so if you don't set this, you will get an error when trying to iterate through the number of CPUs. Um, so 
This took a very long time to run, but you will eventually be able to get results uh, with this approach. Um, thank you very much for listening to this. Hopefully this is helpful to others who have tried to go through this process. Thanks again.